You're now tuned in to Life Song Radio, a weekly podcast dedicated to accurately studying the Word of God in a comprehensive and biblical manner. Listen in as hosts Phil Ramsey and Blake Shankle dig into the Word line by line, verse by verse, leaving no stone unturned. Grab your Bible and your notebook and get prepared to study the living, breathing, active Word of God. Now, here are your hosts of Life Song Radio. Hello and welcome to another episode of Life Song Radio. My name is Blake Shankel. And well, 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 look at what the cat yep. drug up. Drug it in, baby. Mr. Phil Rams. Yeah. Had a miss last week. Uh, I was sharing the gospel on the beach. You know. <laughs> That's good. I, well, I did, not I failed. Oh, okay. I did go to the beach last week uh, and was not able to be here, but uh, I, I did watch the program and looked real good, great yeah. in-depth Bible study. So Good. You definitely uh, uncovered every every <laughs> nugget, every stone you you uh, you dug in. Got, you did real good. So I enjoyed watching that. Good. But I'm glad to be back. Yep. Uh, got to preach last week at my home church. Excited you about sure did. that. Uh Man, I, the the scripture I taught was uh, the Emmaus walk, and uh, the the biggest thing about that scripture, I encourage you to go read it. It's in Luke twenty four, because it's about the scripture. Right. Uh, if we uh, if we have the scripture, we have enough, and we have to be responsible to know it. And those two on that road that day, uh, it was it was neat as Jesus explained the scripture to them, but yet they didn't know it was Christ. And then, as he was laying out the scripture, they got on fire for the Lord. The heart yeah. started burning, yeah. and without even knowing it was Jesus laying it out. And then they just they just went crazy, man. Yeah. Love, you know. It goes to show you that we really the word is so much stronger than even. Would you say the word is so much more sure than even the presence of Christ? Well, and I would <laughs> because of. Uh, Time, you know, was uh, Blake does the music at our church. He kind of organi- organizes everything. I said, I need about this many minutes, and of course, never nothing ever just goes right on Sunday, you know, one way or the other. So I had to cut uh, two and a half pages off of my on the fly. Not you because know? of Blake, y'all. Blake left from fifty, <laughs> but on the fly uh, was had to cut two and a half pages off. And one of the things I had to cut off, if you go back and look, when you look at the scripture and you look at that account. And and how Christ showed uh, the importance of the Scripture, mm. and it, it is enough. And so the question is: Is there any? If you were, if you went to the Mount of Transfiguration, who was on the Mount of Transfiguration? Peter, yep. James, and John. Yep. Was that right? And they saw Christ. They saw His glory. They yep. heard God the Father speak from a cloud. They saw Moses and Elijah. And if you look at that event, if I was there, and if I walked down off that mountain, and I said, "Hey." I'm in, baby. Yeah. There is nothing. No, hey, I've heard from the Father. I saw Christ in His glory. I heard. I saw and heard Moses and Elijah. It's done deal. Mm. There's nothing that's more sure than that. And then, and then, if you keep reading that account, but the Word more fully conformed, which means even more than the experience of hearing from the Father. Uh, seeing Christ's glory unveiled and seeing, Mo- and he- seeing and hearing Moses and Elijah. What's more sure than that? The Word of God. Yeah. So it's can I go on the record today and say Scripture is enough? Yeah. Please. It's enough. You know, I hear people say, I just want more of you, God. I want more of you. And I would say to them, have you mastered the Bible? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you haven't. I haven't. And nobody ever will. So it's enough. Everything that we need to live this life is in, contained in the Scripture. Yeah. So stick with it. Yeah, I agree. And we're we're seeing this battle in in the SBC too. Not to bring, we're not going to stick on this very long, but we see this battle. I hear it even from the pulpit. Is is man, the Scripture is sufficient, but they always add that conjunction there, yeah. and and it in that just man that sends shrills up my spine when I hear that. But no, Scripture is sufficient. It's sufficient for all life and godliness, you know, it's for, for reproof and correction, right? It is God breathed, as Second Timothy three sixteen talks about. And so yeah, I mean, uh, we, we we need the word. Yeah. And and that's what we do here at Life Song is we just look at the word and we exposit the word and man, this is like you said, 
we can't we ain't even mastered a lifetime of this and we'll never master this no. and, and so to, to want something else beside that is is to say that this is not sufficient correct you know. and so well hopefully that we'll get to play that i think you know yeah, hopefully it may, it may not be able to make it on tv but yet you know for because it is 50 minutes but we'll be able to put it on our podcast for yeah. sure and so looking forward to that it was a really good message and we'll get that up here soon maybe one week we get to take off we'll play that in our in our um in our absence but man I missed you last week it, it was a good bible study we were romans 14 and um what was your biggest takeaway you think from the scripture I mean, we're in Christian liberty here, right? Matters of the conscience, right? How far? I'm trying to figure. How far did you get? Yeah, I got through verse four. So let's just—I tell you what. Let's just kind of back up. Let's let's get a run and start to where we're at today. I didn't get to really finish up verse four. Let's let's back up and let's get to. I think we're going to do verse nine. But I'm in the NASB. Let's read here, chapter fourteen, and we'll kind of give a little brief overview here. Paul says, "Now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. One person has faith that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats vegetables only." The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Verse 5. One person regards one day above another, regards every day alike. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it for the Lord, and he who eats does so for the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who eats not for the Lord, he does not eat and gives thanks to God. For not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. Or if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Hmm. And good verses here. Yeah. Kind of confusing if you just read them instead of you know kind of dissecting it. If you don't dissect it, it kind of gets a little muddled there at, at verse uh, 5 because he's talking about weak and strong and this person and that person, a lot of pronouns and stuff. Really good scripture to try to di- uh, you know dissect here on pronouns too. But we talked about last week, or at least I talked about, the, the, we talked about the scripture, this weak and strong Christian. I think what was going on, there was some dispute inside of the Roman church. And and what we could only surmise is, is that we had uh, Jews and, and Gentiles, most likely, coming inside together. Remember, they, these two were were fiercely hated each other. They, In fact, the Jews would have regarded the Gentiles as dogs. And so now they've been brought in together. We have this wicked stepbrother, if you will, being brought into the family. And so what we see here is, is there's this, evidently there's a dispute over days. There's a dispute over food, in which we talked about last week, this this feud, food, which is we probably dietary restrictions. But we'll talk about it from the Gentile side as well. Uh, and then um, then we'll get into next week with drinking, uh, a great topic that you love, right? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it will be a good topic, yeah. though, because it, it really does come up. It'll be some good discussion there. I think we, we kind of uh, talk about next week. But I think there's a dispute here. And we have these weaker brothers, and we have these stronger brothers. The stronger brothers being, yeah. Can I say this? Uh, you, you said weak and strong. Correct. All right. Now, we have cultures of Judaism and then everybody else who wasn't a Jew. Right. In Judaism, they have strict dietary. These are all uh, commandments of the Lord in Judaism, by That's the right. way. And then, and then you have uh, those who aren't Jews, everybody else, Gentiles. And then you have the church, which is birth. You have this group of people who come out of Judaism. You have Gentiles, who knows what they were in. I mean, they're all in kind of other worship, many of them. And now you put them under, let's just say, the same roof. And so now you see, but within this roof, there are people who, who are strong and there are people who are weak. People who are strong, I would say, are more mature and know the word. People who are weak don't know as much of the word and God's commandments as this one. Correct. And so you got these two two things in here. You got two cultures, Jews and Gentiles, two ways of living. You have some stronger people and some weaker people. Correct. 
Correct. Absolutely. And and probably within this, you're seeing the weaker people would be the those that come out of Judaism. I mean, it just makes, as you read this, it makes more sense because and of that's the, pretty neat, too, because Judaism yeah. and Jews are God's, look, they're yeah. God's people. They had the law. They had it all. Right. But yet... They probably, like you said, a little bit more weaker than everybody else. Sure, because they're coming in, bringing this baggage with them of the Jewish customs that they've been that most they've been they've grown up with these yeah. things. You think about some, you think about a Jew who's been converted, who's been uh, in Judaism his whole life, fifty, sixty years. I mean, what is he doing? He's he's obeying the law of Moses. Right, uh, dietary these things that were that were that were brought down uh, in in the law, mm-hmm. the ceremonial law, right, the the civic law, these 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 customs in which Jews were to be accustomed to, right, the dietary restrictions, these these feasts, these festivals, even the Sabbath, Sabbath, yeah. which we'll get into that a little bit as yeah. well today. Uh, and, and then, but I also say that is is that there's probably some Gentiles here as well in the in the food category because we see that in Corinthians where the Gentiles who were who may have been struggling overeating some types of meat because of uh, because due to they were offered up to pagan idols. Yeah. Right, and and Paul hammers that in in First Corinthians, I think chapter eight. I said chapter three last week, but somewhere in there, uh, and he hammers that is is you know that that the stronger Christians can handle those things. They know that ultimately. Ultimately, that all things have been given by God, and they're fine, whether they've been offered up to idols or not. That's that's a conscience issue, and ultimately, that's what we get into. So, but what Paul's doing here is he's really saying, look, the weaker brother uh, probably needs the most help because he's probably the easiest offended. He's getting offended by this stronger brother who's eating probably whatever he wants to. He's eating pork, <laughs> good old pork chops. And the, and the Jews over here probably struggling with that, if you will. Uh, but 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 the stronger brother has to be careful not to abuse that freedom as well and make his younger brother, uh, not to be judgmental upon his younger brother, not to uh, lord that over him or abuse that Christian liberty as well, because that's a sin in itself. So Paul's kind of, he's, he's, he's doing a very good job here of going back and forth with that. And so uh, I, last week, I didn't get too far on verse four, but he says here, who are you to judge the servant of another? Basically, who are you to get into the business of one another, right? Mind your own business. To his own master, he stands or fall, and he will stand. This is talking to Christians here. The Christian is going to stand, right, before his master, because here's why. For the Lord is able to make him stand. I really, I find that just fascinating is, is this, this power that the Lord uh, has, right, that he's, that, that Paul says is regarding the stronger brother is, is to the weaker, he says he's going to stand, and, and it's a certainty there. And this word, he is able, is this dunamis. We've seen that early on. Paul's used this in Romans, in, in Romans one seventeen. This dunamis, this power, right? Dyn- it comes into the English language as dynamite. But it's all-powerful. It's almighty. Uh, he's able to make him stand. He is the master. He knows his servant. And he knows how to keep his servant. That's the Lord's doing, right? That, that, that's, that's um, don't worry about the older brother, or the, we, the the stronger brother, weaker Christian, or vice versa as well, right? Uh, so what we're to do, like we talked about, I think Paul was saying to the church as Rome is, is that they're becoming easily entangled over these issues of eating and drinking, right? And these days, can I can I say, as yeah, you're talking? Yeah, back in the culture. They didn't have a lot of distractions, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> you talking about Facebook and TV? They didn't have a, you know, in today's society, there's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of distractions. There, you got movies, you got live, you got all these things. Back in a in that day, things were a lot more simpler. And I would say, even these things that they're they're uh, having issues with one another with, they're pretty big deals. You know, they lived, they worked, and they ate. You know, so. I don't. I think as you as you look back, uh, this was big to them. And it says for it says, if you don't take this right, and I, it says, who are you to judge? To, and I've heard this before too. People actually say this, take it out of context. Like if I was confronting you with a about, sin, with, with a sin, who are you to judge a servant of, of another to his own master? He's standing. So, I, so what that is saying is they would take that out of context and say, "Quit judging me." Mm-hmm. That's not what that's talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. at all. No, this is in, and that's a good point because that's what I was going with. Is is this is a matters of conscience. Here, these are these are 
Adiaphora, okay. if you will. What does that mean? Yeah, these are things that, that the Bible... You said that word the other day. Yeah, the Bible necessarily doesn't... These are disputed things that the Bible necessarily doesn't doesn't speak clearly of. It's not a salvation issue. Okay, matter of conscience. You say, So what does that look like? So, so you have this issue here, mm-hmm. and one says right, one says wrong. Right. So now you have a matter of con. Now play that out for me. Yeah. So the the mature Christian would know he would know the word. Right. He knows the freedom he has in Christ. Let's take food for example. Let's take baby back ribs. uh, He knows that that is not a sin by by doing that because he's not held under any dietary restrictions. Because there's no nothing in the in the uh, Bible that says that he has to. to, to obtain to that, right? So he could uh, eat that with a clean conscience. That, absolutely. Okay. And so that's that's where he's at. He can eat that with a cr- clean conscience. And so the weaker brother is not to judge that older brother because of that, right? He's not to, to look upon him with contempt to say, man, you can't really be doing that because, well, you're the weaker brother. You're weaker in faith. You, don't, you, you really don't understand your freedom in Christ. But the older brother also needs to realize that the younger, this weaker person, is not as knowledgeable in the faith. And we talked about this definite the faith, right? It is this uh, this objective faith, not faith in which we the subjective but the objective faith, right? The faith, meaning the knowledge of of the Christian faith, the doctrinal side of things. And basically, he's not as knowledgeable in those things. He doesn't understand the freedom he has under Christ. Now. Ultimately, the older, the mature brother, the, the the stronger brother needs to come alongside and sanctify this brother. Needs to pray for this brother and sanctify him so that he's not held down, uh, uh, you know, with the Old Testament dietary restrictions. He needs to understand. Now he's understand the weaker brother's not holding this, but he he understands his salvation is not wrapped up into that. This is not a salvation issue. If it was, he would be right to say, "Hey, this is what Hebrews does." You better stop that because they were they were trying to bring all that back for salvation issues. This is more of a conscience issue, right? Right. So so in, in that interaction with those two people with those baby back ribs, the mature Christian, based on where the the immature or weaker brother is, he should not eat ribs in front of him. Or so what he should do, and he shouldn't the weaker shouldn't do this, but also more responsibility is on the one who is more knowledgeable in the scriptures. Sure. So I, if it were me, and I think I think I'm right in this, I wouldn't be eating ribs in front of him until he understood that that it's not a sin. Right. So that but and to do maybe you, you tell me out. But if I did that in front of him, would I be violating my conscience based on the Bible says don't do that to a weaker brother? Very, well, very well could have been. I give so Peter no sin example, could become a sin. Very well, give Peter the example is as Peter said, whoa, let me you know I don't want to offend my you know I don't want to. Peter was doing it for a different reason, right? Because he was afraid they were going to get mad at him. You know the Jews when they came, he was eating with the Gentiles. He stopped eating with the Gentiles. Well, he he left them to go to the Jews, right? Because he didn't want to tick the Jews off. But in in doing that, what, what is he doing? He's giving hearty approval to the Jews and still saying, yeah, I need to do this rather than, no, he should have just st- stuck with eating with the Gentiles. So it's a fine line of there that, that really is if, if you cause that younger brother to stumble, I think you work yourself into a sin, mm-hmm. right? I think you, you have to be careful, but you have to teach. It's a teaching moment is, is this younger brother, hey, let's, let's look at this. Why do you, why do you, I'm not going to judge you based upon this, but let's understand why I can do these things, right? It's loving one another. It's bringing this brother along. As the mature Christian, you have the responsibility to bring that younger, weaker brother in the faith along and teach him those things. Show him them things. Show him where they should have... Where, what Paul's saying is, is ultimately, hey, go to that weaker brother. Show him in the scriptures, right, where... Christ has fulfilled the Old Testament law. You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, uh, you don't have to do these things, uh, and you're not going to violate your conscience, or you're not going to uh, violate any God's laws if you do these things. Mm-hmm. As far as eating and not taking of the days. Now, what Paul's saying is, if he does that, it's still not a sin. This is what he's saying, and we're going to get into that today. Yeah. Right, because it's ultimately is is he's the one. Hey, I give thanks to the Lord whether I take of the days or I don't take of the days. I still thank the Lord for that. You know, so there's a it's a hard issue. Um, so that's why Paul says this, this is really a matters of conscience here. These are these are conscience issues. It do, it, it still he still says the brother is weaker. Yeah. The, those who bring those things in, they need to come out of that. 
They need. They don't really need to stay there. And and to, to put an exclamation point on what you said, matter of conscience, and this isn't the word of God. So with the word of God and the commands of the Bible, there is no movement. Right. So when when, when the Bible says something. There's no movement. Matter of conscience, there's some movement as far as between the, the two brothers yeah. and their consciences, and, right. and one knowing more than the other, yeah. and there, there's some flexibility. But when it comes to God's Word, there's no flexibility. And I would also say that I agree. I would also say, too, this, this is probably more relevant in this culture at this point because the church is, church is still being birthed, right? I mean, it's still in its infancy. They still don't have the canon here. Right, it's not canonized. They don't really have that, so they have to. It's still a teaching moment in this. At, at this point in our lives, man, we've got. We can go to the scriptures and say, "Hey, younger Christian, you don't, no, younger Jew, you don't have to obtain to that. We need to be teaching them. You don't have to worry about that because it's been fulfilled in Christ." You, yeah. you know, it, it, so we could be a little bit, we you know, working on the now. These are there's principles involved in this, right? We're we're speaking of probably dietary restrictions here. But there's also principles when it comes to we're going to get into it today about days, right? The Sabbath is one, and let's I tell you what, let's let's move forward here and let's kind of work through this, if you buzzing? will. I think my phone is buzzing. <laughs> um, I was not going to pay attention to it until you did. In fact, we're running out of time, so we're not going to get too far. But look here. Verse 5, one person regards one day. Well, let me time out. Let me answer your question here for just a second. This is not a sin issue. If this is a true sin against the Word of God, it's not. that's not conscience right there. The brother, older brother, has a responsibility to go to the younger brother, the weaker brother. The weaker brother has a responsibility to go to the other brother and rebuke that person in sin, exhort that person, bring that person. That That's not judging that person. That's actually bringing a sin before that person, and they need to repent of that. That's not what Paul's talking about here. So we make that clear, right? Paul says, verse 5, one person values one day over another, right? That one person, right, is the, the younger brother. Another values every day the same. That would be the mature brother. Right? I said younger brother. It's the weaker brother. Sorry. Right. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. Right? So the big idea of this passage that we have today is a dispute over days. All right? Let, let's understand the background first. The problem was brewing in the church. Right? Uh, we have two camps. We got the we got the, the, the weaker brother as well as the older brother. Right? And we're not going to kind of... I'm not going to go back over through all the Old Testament law and stuff. But ultimately, the weaker brothers were... Probably judging the older, the stronger brothers, if you will, they were probably being very legalistic, if you will, bringing that, bringing their Judaism into the church. The stronger brothers, on the other hand, were exercising contempt towards the the weaker brothers. So, result, Paul has to address this dispute, and Paul's just trying to untie this knot. And uh, uh, I think it has relevance today, Phil. You, you think about it. Let's, let's bring this into today's culture, if you will. One example is that there's Christians today who want to observe all of the Old Testament restrictions concerning the Sabbath. Those would be is, is not to work upon the Sabbath. Now, is the Sabbath still in effect? Well, there's two trains, trains of thought. The Sabbath, what we what we know as the Old Testament Sabbath, has been brought. Now we're in the New Testament, and they would say there's some. I, I can't remember... Um, uh, there's several that would hold to that the, the Sabbath is now the Sunday that we, what we call the Lord's Day. And now what restrictions were on the Sabbath have been brought into today. And you you really ultimately aren't allowed to do anything. There's, there's really strong brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ who would say that on Sunday, man, about the only thing you can do is, is go to church and you go home and you sit on the couch and that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Matter of conscience, is that a necessarily a sin? No, it's it's not. Well, if, you, uh, it, it, if you if you set aside that day and you focus on the Lord and and worship and read and study and and those are good things. Uh, yes, yes. So the other camp where I would probably lie, where I would lie is is that the Sabbath has been fulfilled in Christ. Christ is our Sabbath. He, we rest in Him every day as a Sabbath for us, ultimately. Yeah. But our Sunday, we would call the Lord's Day. It is the Lord's Day, and I think the early church would affirm that is, is in, in the early church, they would call this the Lord's Day, for it is the day He rose from the dead. And so we would say, is I would say that we have freedom upon Sunday to, to cook a meal, 
<laughs> to watch a football or, or game. Or eat a meal. <laughs> to eat a meal, eat right? Eat some ribs, by yeah, the way. Yeah, if I wanted to go hit some golf balls outside, I could do those things. Is that necessarily a sin? Not to me, it's not. That, that matters of conscience. You see how that works out and plays? So is either wrong? No. Is either right? And what, so, so what I what I shouldn't do is go tell you that you can't do that, correct? And you can't tell me that I can't do this. It's a matter of what I feel or what I think, and it's not in. It's not uh, well. Can I read? Do you have Galatians four nine in your? Let me just read that. Real I do. Quick. Yeah. It says, "But now that you have come to know God, or rather be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world, whose slaves you want, whose slaves you want to be once more? You observe days and months, seasons and years. I'm afraid I may have labored over you in vain. That's not really what I want to read. Colossians two sixteen. Therefore." Let no one pass judgment on you in the questions of what? Food and drink and with regard to festival or new moon, or here it is, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Just like you just said. Yeah. In Christ. And there's a future. I love creation, how God yes. laid that out. Six days, rested on the seventh. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a, a day of rest, you know, for us. In heaven, you know, that we can look forward to also. Absolutely. But but here that I mean to me Colossians two sixteen kinda kinda settles it. It does. It does. I would say so. But what we're saying here is is, is that brother in sin if he doesn't do those things upon Sunday, he refers to that as the Sabbath brings those things and says, I'm not gonna work on them. No. I, that's a matter of conscience. That's where his conscience his conscience has, has settled there. Can we work through those things? Let's talk about those things. Maybe he grows out of that. Maybe we learn. Absolutely. It's sanctification. It's discipleship. Absolutely. In the Word of God. Let's look at Scripture and see what Paul says about that. But necessarily, it's a matter of conscience. And so Paul says, hey, one person values one day over another. That one person being the weaker brother, this weaker brother values one day over the other. And one day, most likely, is the Sabbath. Most likely is this Sabbath, right? He's valuing this. It was, and it's all its regulations that it brought with it. Uh, it would also include feast days such as Passover, right? The Feast of Booths. Uh, it would, it would include um, uh, several Pentecost even, and and that person is the weaker brother. Note that it also could have been a part of a paganism as well. Not necessarily has to be a Jew. It could also be pagan. As Paul's pretty general here, I think. Yeah. You know, we can kind of, I think so, because he's laying the principle out is what he's trying to do. He's not really trying to point one brother over another. He's he's just laying a principle out here and trying to untie the knot and 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 really have unity with inside the church, which he's ultimately been preaching in pa- the last two chapters, if you will. Uh, so it's not necessarily clear who he's addressing, um, but uh, but what he's saying is is. By holding on to these days, there's a weakness. There's a, there's a weakness. Ultimately, he's saying, because he's referring to that as the weaker brother, and, and so uh, he, he says another values every day the same. Let's get through this verse at least. Another values every day the same. That would be the stronger brother, most likely a Gentile believer. He who most likely grew up in pagan has been converted the same way the Jewish person has con- been converted, right by the grace of God. He has no issues partaking of something upon. The Sabbath day, or we would call it the Lord's day. He's strong in his faith. And he has a great understanding of freedom in Christ. And so he values every day the same. The church at Rome, again, like you said earlier, Galatia, they weren't the, they were they were the church of Rome was not the only ones having these these issues. Galatia was, Colossae was, Corinth was. And let's we'll talk about that a little bit uh, more next week. So next week, come back and and we'll we'll promise we'll get to these verses a little bit more. It was kind of a review here. So a couple sentences. Don't don't judge another brother. You know if he you know it's a matter of conscience. And I like to say this in closing. From a Jewish perspective, they served God. God the 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 Gentiles, the pagans. They didn't serve God of the Scriptures. So I would say it was easier for them to come out of this than it was for them Judaizers. I mean, not Judaizers, but those in yes. Judaism to come out of that. Yeah, that's they a, had to let they got to let that go. Yeah. Anyway, we'll we we'll hit that again yeah. next week. Go to our website lifesongradio.com. See you next week for another edition of Lifesong Radio.